These are the most underrated players for every single NFL team. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Now, a couple days ago, I made a video talking about the most overrated player for every single NFL team, and you guys seem to really like it. That video did very well. So today, I decided to be a little bit more positive. I'm gonna talk about the players that we don't talk about enough, the guys that are just really underappreciated. And my goal for this video is to shine a light on each fan base's most underappreciated player. So if you're a fan of one of these teams, I want you to recognize this player and say, yes, this guy needs more attention. So let's get right into it. Starting with the Chicago Bears, I think the most underrated player is Tevin Jenkins. Now, Tevin Jenkins, coming out of Oklahoma State, I remember there being a lot of talk about him. He's dealt with some injury stuff. You know, there were trade rumors last year. But I do think that Tevin Jenkins is legitimately one of the best guards in the NFL. I think now that uh, the Bears offense is kind of improved all the way around, he is going to be one of their key components. And I think we're seeing the fact that he's going to kind of hold down the guard spot opposite of a guy like Nate Davis, who's been very unavailable, very mysterious, um, has not been reliable so far. I think Tevin Jenkins is going to be an anchor. I hope he's going to be able to stay healthy, and I look forward to him beating the shit out of a lot of interior defensive linemen. For the Packers, there were a few guys that I could have gone with here. Um, I mean, their young core last year, I think you could all say is underrated, but I'm going to specifically single out Dontavian Wicks, who I thought was really one of the most underrated players in the NFL. Um, he is awesome. I mean, he was a rookie last year, didn't come in with a lot of hype, didn't come in with, you know expectations to be super good and him alongside Jordan Love and you know Jaden Reed and Tucker Craft and Luke Musgrave they made the Packers a lot better than a lot of people thought um, specifically in researching this video I saw that Dontavian Wicks had a 95% catch rate on catchable passes that was second in the NFL this guy's hands are really good he got open and I think um, down the stretch of the season we really saw his his playmaking ability and if his chemistry continues to grow with Jordan Love, he's going to be a really good player for a long time. For the Lions, I wanted to give some love to the big boys up front. DJ Reader, um, he's going to be a huge addition to this Lions team. He has been a guy in Cincinnati that has been, again, quietly one of the better interior defensive tackles in the NFL. I think he has the ability to play the run well while also being able to rush the passer. I think he's going to be a huge addition to this Detroit offensive line. Defensive line. And I think that that's just going to add another element to this defensive line that kind of has been just run by Aiden Hutchinson. Now he'll have some help um, on the interior. I think DJ Reader is an excellent addition for the Lions. For the Vikings, I'm going to talk about Ivan Pace Jr. Uh, he kind of burst onto the scene last year. He's an undrafted rookie, one of the better linebackers last year. He played the he played uh, pass coverage and he rushed the passer better than a lot of guys last year, right? And Brian Flores' scheme is very blitz heavy. It's very kind of just throw the kitchen sink at quarterbacks, whatever. He was able to do that. He was able to be a dependable pass rusher, again, while also being able to drop back in coverage. I think this guy's really underrated. Again, we talk all the time about Minnesota's skill position players, but we don't talk about their defensive guys a lot. I think Ivan Pace Jr. really does need some more attention. He's going to be a really good linebacker in this league. If you can, especially, you know, with the way that he can run sideline to sideline, I think he's going to be a really good linebacker in this league for a lot of years. Now let's talk about the 49ers. And you guys know how much I hate giving credit to the 49ers, but they, like every team, do have underrated players, unfortunately. Now I had to enlist the help of my friend Matt, a massive 49ers fan. He gave me the amount... And the name he gave me was Diamandre Lenore. And I probably butchered the shit out of that, because, but I don't care. It's the 49ers. But for purposes of this video, I'm just going to call him Demo. Uh, Demo had a really good year last year, right? Had 84 tackles, 3 interceptions, 10 pass breakups. Um, this 49ers secondary, I think, is probably the weakness of their team. But if they can have good, solid contributions from a guy like Demo playing the cornerback position, um, they're going to be even scarier because of how good they are on the front seven. Um, he was actually really good last year. I remember he, you know, did a pretty good job against DK Metcalf, which, which is, is not easy. Even if you're technically sound, I mean, Demo is like 5'10", like maybe 200 pounds. DK is like six inches taller, probably 20 pounds heavier. He's big, strong, fast. It's not, it's not easy to keep up with DK Metcalf. And I remember he did a really good job with that. Um, and again, he's just one of the more unsung heroes of this 49ers team. For the Seattle Seahawks, the answer is clear and obvious. The most underrated player on the Seattle Seahawks is Geno Smith. Geno Smith continues to be one of, if not the most underrated quarterbacks in the entire NFL. People are always talking about replacing him, getting rid of him. Sam Howell's going to take his job. You guys need to shut the hell up, respectfully. Geno Smith is a good quarterback in the NFL. He's a good quarterback. He's not Burrow. He's not Mahomes. He's not Josh Allen. But he certainly isn't like Gardner Minshew 
or I don't even know, like whoever else you want to put in the lower tier quarterback. He, he's not those guys, right? He's a good quarterback. I am hopeful that with a new offensive coordinator, they can unlock another element of Geno Smith and another element of this offense. Um, the kryptonite for the Seahawks recently has been they've been bad on third downs and they've been bad in the red zone. I think if the Seahawks get better in those two areas, we can see Geno Smith being in conversation to be a top 10 quarterback in the NFL. I know that's a hot take. I know it's a hot take. But Geno Smith is continually underrated. I am riding high on number seven, and he's the guy to lead this franchise. For the Rams, it is going to be interior offensive lineman Steve Avila. Now, I am curious. I am pretty sure that he is going to be their starting center this year because their additions um, with free agency with guard, um, and that's massive, right? He was actually really good as a rookie last year playing guard. Um, and Sean McVay, you know, the scheme that they're going to run, I think they're going to run. A, they're going to run a lot of inside zone. Obviously, a huge priority is going to be to keep Matthew Stafford healthy. I think he's going to be able to do that. I don't think people really appreciate him, how good he was last year, and the contributions that he's going to make to this Rams offense. I think he's the Rams' most underrated player. The most underrated player for the Cardinals is James Conner. Now, James Conner is a big name, and a lot of you guys are like, well, James Conner. James Conner very, very quietly had 1,000 yards last year. He had seven touchdowns. Um, He had a good yards per carry clip. People have kind of forgot about James Conner, but dude, he's still kicking it. He is still moving around. And again, I think the reason he's underrated is because everybody wants to talk about, oh, Trey McBride, oh, Marvin Harrison Jr., oh, Kyler Murray is going to come back and be healthy. Understandably so. But James Conner is still one of the better running backs in the NFL. He is a dog. He is you know, still a ground and pound physical runner. And I think that he doesn't get appreciated enough by NFL fans. James Conner, to me, is the most underrated Cardinal. For the Cowboys, this is a bit tricky, I'm not going to lie, because the Cowboys are one of those teams that are just talked about at nauseum. So it's hard for me to say that any of their players are underrated. But a guy that I do think deserves more recognition, especially for the way he played last year, is Malik Hooker. Malik Hooker was very solid last year. You know, he came over from Indianapolis where he was a first-round pick out of Ohio State, and he kind of never met expectations as a Colt. I thought last year, though, he was really good. Uh, He, you know, put together a lot of really nice plays. Um, I'm looking at it right now. He had a 77 PFF grade, which, again, not superstar level, but a really, really solid safety. He was showing signs of being the safety that we all thought he was coming out of Ohio State, and I think that he's probably the most underrated Cowboy right now. For the Eagles, I enlisted the help of my friend Jacob, who was a huge Eagles fan, and he told me to talk about defensive tackle Milton Williams. Now, there's a couple reasons why Milton Williams is the most underrated Eagle. First of all, he's now going to have to fill the shoes, the massive shoes, literally and figuratively, of Fletcher Cox. Second of all, he is phenomenal in run defense. He's a really, really good run defender, and the, the Philadelphia Eagles have developed linemen on both sides of the ball very, very well. Don't be surprised if you see a lot more of Milton Williams going into this year. I think that he's going to have a big year for the Eagles. For the Giants, I want to talk about linebacker Bobby Okariki, uh, one of the coolest names in the NFL, but he's also one of the best linebackers in the NFL. You know, it kind of gets lost in the shuffle because the Giants have been bad, or they were bad last year, but Bobby Okariki has been really, really good. Uh, I remember specifically the game against the Buffalo Bills. I mean, it just felt like he was flying all over the field. He was making plays left and right. They almost beat the Bills, actually, which is crazy to think about, right? Um, he's he's one of the most underappreciated linebackers in the NFL. And again, the Giants are not going to be very good this year. He's probably not going to get a lot of attention, unlike a Fred Warner, unlike a Roquan Smith, who are both on Super Bowl caliber teams. But I think Bobby Okariki is a really, really good player for the Giants. For the Washington Commanders, we got back-to-back linebackers here. I'm going to talk about Frankie Louvu. I really like Frankie Louvu. You know, I, I didn't. I was very critical of the way that the Commanders spent their money in free agency, but I did think that was one of the better moves that they made. They got Frankie Louvu on a relatively cheap deal. Now, again, is he a Roquan, a Fred Warner? No, he's not those guys. I don't even think he's as good as Bobby Okariki. But I think that he is a really solid linebacker. He's a really good athlete. He's going to be able to make a lot of plays for this Dan Quinn defense. And I think, honestly, uh, he's better than Bobby Wagner at this point, who they signed as well. So... There you go. There's Frankie Louvu. For the Falcons, I want to talk about Caden Ellis, the pass rusher, kind of a linebacker, edge rusher hybrid. Um, last year, he had a pressure rate of 27.4%. Now, relatively limited sample size, I understand. However, I think that his new um, skill, I'm, I'm sorry, his new defensive coordinator will appreciate his versatile skill set to play outside, to set the edge, everything like that. Um, and again, you have a pressure rate that high, maybe not sustainable, However, I do think that with more snaps, he could seriously affect the quarterback. 
I think that Cade Nellis is one of the more underappreciated players on the Atlanta Falcons. Speaking of edge rushers, the most underrated player on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is Yaya Diaby. Again, one of the coolest names in the NFL. Yaya Diaby quietly, and I do mean quietly, had seven and a half sacks as a rookie. That is super solid. Super solid. He's got a defensive head coach in Todd Bowles. And I really do think that he is going to unlock another level to his play last year. I remember in the playoff game against the Lions, there were a couple plays where he was really manhandling Panay Sewell. All pro, now highest paid tackle in NFL history, Panay Sewell. This guy's really good. I remember him coming out of the draft last year, and I really, really liked him. Um, this guy is going to be a really good player. Don't be surprised if he has double-digit sacks in 2024. For the Panthers, I think their most underrated player is Chuba Hubbard. Now, you guys are going to hate me. I am a Chuba Hubbard fan. I have been since his days at Oklahoma State. And last year, the running game just had a severe transition to when he was the lead back from when Miles Sanders was the lead back. He was clearly the better running back last year. The offense clearly ran better with him as the lead back. And he was productive down the stretch. Now, he kind of got buried for snaps early on in the year. But down the stretch, Chupa Hubbard was a really solid runner. Again, I'm not saying he's Christian McCaffrey, but I'm saying he is a good running back. Ironically, he's teammates with Christian McCaffrey. I'm not saying he is Christian McCaffrey. He's a really good runner and a guy that I think is, is underrated. Um, I unfortunately think that he might get buried again when Jonathan Brooks comes back, but hopefully he's able to uh, put enough good stuff on tape for hopefully another team to give him a chance, maybe at the deadline they trade for him. And uh, I, think he's, I think he's a really good running back. For the Saints, we have corner Paulson Adebo. This was obvious. Paulson Adebo is quietly one of the best corners in the NFL. Um, he doesn't get a lot of name recognition. Again, doesn't play for a big market team. The Saints aren't going to be very good. He you know, doesn't light up the stat sheet. Just a really, really solid coverage corner for the Saints, um, who have kind of done that for a while, especially with a guy like Marshawn Lattimore. Paulson Adebo is really good. Um, again, I think that he deserves much more credit. I think this will probably be the year where people – recognize Paulson Adebo in the top cornerback conversation. Uh, but until then, he's one of the more underrated players in the NFL. For the Bengals, I'm going to go with safety Jordan Battle. Now, as you can see, I'm an Alabama fan. I didn't love Jordan Battle coming out of Alabama. I really didn't. I don't know what it was. I was just not super high on him. Now, he was taken in the second round by the Bengals last year, and I thought, okay, that'll be nice. And admittedly, I didn't see much of him early on in the year. I don't believe he started until week 11. But from week 11 on, I mean, he seriously, he was the ninth highest grade safety per PFF. Um, to be a top 10 safety for basically half the year is quite impressive. I think his ball skills are underrated. His coverage ability is underrated. And he's kind of a hybrid defender. So I think Jordan Battle is probably the most underrated Cincinnati Bengal. For the Ravens, I had to enlist the help of my friend TTB Ravens Media. He's been on the channel before. You guys know who that is. I asked him who the most underrated Raven was, and he told me, without hesitation, it was Brandon Stevens. Brandon Stevens, um, he actually, when researching this video, I found this out, he took more snaps last year than any other Ravens defender. Kind of crazy. Um, he's been getting better playing the ball in the air. I know that used to be like kind of an issue for him, from what I understand. He's gotten a lot better. He's a transition safety. Now he's playing perimeter cornerback. Uh, it was really good. Obviously, the Ravens defense was one of the best in the NFL last year, and you don't do that with a garbage corner. He was really good last year. Um, I think he's going to get better. Obviously, losing Mike McDonald sucks, but I think he'll still be really good. He's shown steady improvement over the last several years, and uh, I'm excited to see what he has in 2024. For the Pittsburgh Steelers, I I was really debating two guys. I was debating two relative big names, but guys that I don't think get appreciated enough. The first guy was Alex Highsmith, uh, who has 21 and a half sacks over the last two years. However, the guy that I decided to go with is Jalen Warren. To me, Jalen Warren is just such a better running back than Najee Harris. Najee Harris has been disappointing since going in the first round from Alabama. Let's just call it what it is. He's like a career 3.9 average yard per carry guy. Jalen Warren is so much more explosive. He's a much better receiver. He's feisty as fuck, even though he's much smaller than Najee Harris. I really do love Jalen Warren, and I hope that he gets to flourish in the Arthur Smith offense. You know, this is a time, not last year when you had B. John Robinson, but this is a time where Arthur Smith could really deploy that running back by committee approach to give Jalen Warren a lot of opportunities in this offense. I'm really looking forward to what he's going to do. I, I expect big things from Jalen Warren. For the Browns, you know, this is one of those things where I had to go with Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper has quietly been one of the most productive receivers over the last couple of years. And again, the quarterback playing in, in Cleveland has been bad. Uh, for a couple of years now, but it doesn't matter. He's just been elite. I mean, do you remember what he did on Christmas? Was it Christmas Eve last year? That was ridiculous. That was some of the most insane shit I've ever seen in my life. Um, he's just been a really, really good receiver for many years now, and I don't think he gets the credit he deserves. So I know this is 
maybe a bigger name than some of the other guys on this list, but I think Amari Cooper just deserves as much recognition as he could possibly get. For the Kansas City Chiefs, the most underrated player is Trey Smith, the guard. Now, Trey Smith um, was not a guy that was drafted super high. You know what I'm saying? However, um, over the past, I believe, uh, few seasons, like two, three seasons maybe, he has a 76.5 PFF grade, and that's 11th amongst guards. Now, the big issue when the Chiefs lost to the Buccaneers in the Super Bowl was, oh, my God, how are we going to fix this offensive line? We have to protect Patrick Mahomes, yada, yada, yada. You guys understand that, right? Well, they drafted Creed Humphrey, they signed Joe Thune, and they got Trey Smith. And now their offensive line is arguably a strength. Um, I think that he is really under the radar. And again, you've been back-to-back Super Bowls and you're an interior offensive lineman. You're not going to get you know all the headlines understandably so, but Trey Smith is a really solid guard in this league, and he's part of the reason why the Chiefs have been able to transition that group, that offensive line group, from being a weakness to a real strength. For the Chargers, I wanted to go with Asante Samuel Jr. Now, admittedly, I thought he had a great 2022 as a rookie. Didn't hear from him much in 2023, but I still think that he's really solid. Registered a 74 PFF grade last year. Um, I think that with Jim Harbaugh, He's going to become an even better player. And Jesse Minter, as a defensive coordinator, I think he's become even better. I think his aggressiveness will help him more. I think he'll be even more of a ball hawk like he was in 2022. So I think he's the Chargers' most underrated player. For the Raiders, a guy that gets lost in the shuffle a lot that I think is actually a really solid player is Jacoby Myers. Now, obviously, people are not high on the Raiders, myself included, because of their quarterback situation and everything like that. And obviously, he's not the best receiver on his team with Devontae Adams. But I think Jacoby Myers has quietly been a really solid receiver for the past several years um, with the Patriots, you know, other than the time he gave the Raiders the game. Um, You know, he's been solid, dealt with a lot of bad quarterback play during his time in Vegas and during his time in New England, and he's been a consistent producer. Now, the joke always was, oh, he can't score touchdowns, blah, 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 and that was kind of funny. But just kind of day in, day out, solid receiver, not going to light up the scoreboard, but a, just a good player. A good every, every team just needs good players, and he is a really, really solid wide receiver, too, for the Las Vegas, I almost said Oakland, Las Vegas Raiders. For the Denver Broncos, I um, thought about going with Marvin Mims here, but I ended up going with Quinn Miners. Uh, I'm just giving a lot of love to the big boys, you know what I'm saying? And he, shit, he got love, too. He got a, a huge contract extension from the Denver Broncos. Uh, shout out UW Whitewater, that's where my boy's from. He's, he's just a dog. Like, he is a mauler at guard. He's super aggressive. He plays football the right way. Um, again, the Broncos, they don't have a lot to look forward to, but having a solid foundation for the offensive line I think is going to be really solid. I wonder if maybe he'll even play a little center this year. I, I do believe he played center at UW-Whitewater. I know they lost Lloyd Cushenberry to the Tennessee Titans, so maybe he can play center this year. Um, but I think Quinn Miners is, is a really good guard, probably a top five or six guard in the NFL. For the Buffalo Bills, I am going to go with corner Christian Benford. Now, obviously, I know he didn't play much in the postseason. I believe he got hurt, so that did hurt him a little bit. But he was solid all the way around last year for the Buffalo Bills, and they've lost a lot of pieces in free agency. They lost, they've lost a lot of depth. Um, so I think he's going to be, be called on to be a huge contributor for this team going into the 2024 season. I expect him to have an even better year than he had in 2023, and I think that he's one of the more underappreciated Buffalo Bills right now. Speaking of underrated corners, let's talk about the New York Jets. And no, I'm not calling Sauce Gardner underrated. I'm calling DJ Reed underrated. Now, I'm a Seahawks fan. I've been singing the praises of DJ Reed for years. When he was with Seattle, um, that's when he really kind of burst onto the scene and was a really, really good corner. He signed with the Jets, and I was disappointed. Um, but he's been really good with the Jets. Again, he doesn't get the, the love and the recognition because Sauce Gardner's on the other side. I get it. But DJ Reed. For being as small as he is, he plays the ball very well in the air. He's got great coverage ability. And he arguably, no, not arguably, well, maybe arguably, I think him and Sauce Gardner are the best corner duo in the NFL, immediately followed by Tariq Woolen and Devin Witherspoon, but that's neither here nor there. I think DJ Reed's a really, really solid corner who doesn't get the recognition he deserves because of the guy on the other side of the field. For the Miami Dolphins, now I have to appease you guys because you were really mad that I said Tua Tungavailoa was overrated. So I'm going to say that Javon Holland is the most underrated player. I love Javon Holland. Um, He's been a playmaking safety for years now. Um, Last year, I mean, he had, what, a 100-yard pick six against the Jets on a end-of-half Hail Mary. That's some shit you do in Madden, and I love that. That's amazing. Um, He's been really solid, uh, a playmaker. He's, you know, been kind of playing, I thought, more in the box last year maybe than he had normally had, although I'll have to, I guess, double-check that with research that I'm doing after I record the video. That's how you do it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, But, 
Yeah, no, he's he's good. I don't see him in conversations with the top safeties in the NFL. I kind of wonder why that is sometimes. He's really good. Javon Holland's underrated. For the Patriots, one of my favorite players in the NFL, unironically, is Ramondre Stevenson. Ramondre Stevenson, people act like he's fucking garbage. I, I don't understand why I, everybody just says that he's ass. He has an ass offensive line, no playmakers, whatever, and he's still a solid contributor. Now, he missed some time last year. I want to say he missed five or six games um, with an injury if I'm not mistaken, but he's really good. Good out of the backfield, a good runner, has decent speed. Um, I mean, what, what else can you say? He's just he's just underrated. Like, he's – people view him way worse than he actually is. If he got traded to a good – if he got traded to, like, I don't know, the Rams or something or I don't, I don't know, one of these teams with a good offensive line, he would be electric, like electric, electric. So, I think Ramondre Stevenson's underrated for the Patriots. For the Colts, I have safety Julian Blackman. Now – the Colts' defense is going to be what determines how far they're able to go last year, um, next year, excuse me. And if Anthony Richardson is who we all think Anthony Richardson is, the defense is going to have a spotlight on it to be up to par. And I think Julian Blackman is going to be a player that's going to help them get there. Now, their pass rush last year was not very good, um, but they added Lautu Latu in the draft. Now I think it's up to the DBs to really uh, be up to par thought he was solid last year again not a superstar by any means but he was just a solid safety who doesn't get talked about a lot I really am waiting to see what him and this Colts defense can do in 2024 for the Houston Texans I'm gonna go with Xavier Hutchinson the wide receiver now he's probably like wide receiver four right now in a really crowded room however I think that this guy coming out of Iowa State I believe he caught passes from Brock Purdy in college he could be really good. He he could be really good. Um, he's going to be, I think, a good deep threat. And the fact that you have C.J. Stroud, I mean, that's just going to make your life so much easier as a wide receiver. I'm excited to see what he does, um, although I do think that his playing time might be relatively limited. For the Jaguars, I'm going to go with Parker Washington. Now, I know obviously they lost Calvin Ridley, but they did take a receiver in the first round, so there's not a huge, I guess, depth opening for him. I really like what he was able to do at the back half of the year last year. I think he could be a playmaker. I believe that Parker Washington does not get the credit he deserves. I think that he, again, with a bigger opportunity, hopefully, is going to be able to be really good. And I'm excited to see what he does with Trevor Lawrence. And lastly, for the Tennessee Titans, I'm going to go with Tajay Spears. The Titans offense last year was kind of stuck in neutral for a lot of the year. And when they needed an explosive play, it felt like it didn't come from Derrick Henry. It came from Tajay Spears, who is a explosive, shifty runner. Um, he is, I think, lightning in a bottle. Uh, I was very disappointed when they signed Tony Pollard to that $24 million contract because I thought Tajay Spears has the makings to be a lead back. Now, maybe they don't want him getting a huge bulk of carries and catches because he is relatively small, which I understand. Maybe they're going for a more efficient kind of workload, workload for him. But I think that he's a great playmaker. He's a solid running back. Um, he's a guy that you know can make any play a touchdown. And uh, I love explosive guys like that. So don't forget to subscribe and let me know who your most underrated player is for your favorite team. I love you guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.